How's it going guys? Welcome to another Soul Encoded tutorial. Today we're going to be covering higher order functions in JavaScript. So what exactly is a higher order function? Higher order functions is one of those topics in JavaScript where the name of what it is, it makes it sound a lot more confusing than it actually is. In the simplest form, a higher order function is just a function that operates on other functions by either being passed into the function or by returning the function. That's just a simple definition. Let's try to explain it with a few examples. And then let's create like an add by number where we pass in a variable n and then we return a value to add by. This add by function will take in a value n Afterwards, we're going to be returning another add function inside of this that will take in the value m. And in here, we're going to return n plus m. So it's basically whatever is passed in this first parameter n, we're going to be adding that by the second parameter down here when we return this add function. Now let's go ahead and invoke this too. First, we'll assign the add by. A function to uh, invocated function to a variable called add by three, add by, and then we pass in the value three, and then we're going to invoke the add function by calling the add by three variable, and then we'll pass this uh, four, which will make this seven. So let's go ahead and um, ah right here. Sorry, I forgot to add function right here. Let's go ahead and console log this and see what we get. Seven. So you guys have seen this uh, pattern already. If you've been following my JavaScript series, you guys have seen this pattern already. However, I wanted to point out that because this function return, uh, this add by function returns a function, this add by function is now a higher order function. So that was one of the first part of the definition, right? A function that returns a function. So that's one example. Let's look at another example. Let's create a function called print by. And then here we're going to pass in a checker of sorts. And we'll write that checker later. And then here we'll loop through a value. Let's actually also pass in the value for j equals zero, j is less than i, and then we're gonna go in increment j like so. And here we want to only print based on the checker. So if we will say if checker, and then we're gonna pass in the value j here, then we're going to console log the j right so basically this function right now we're expecting a function to be passed in called checker and then based on the checker if the checker val the checker is true then we'll print that particular log so here we could say something like var print by even equals and then print by but notice right here, we need to pass in the checker. So let's go ahead and write the checker. Let's call it is even because we want to print right now. We want to print just the even numbers. That's let's say that we're trying to do that. Then what we need to do is we have to say uh, like some value, some value n if <clears throat> n mod modulus two equals zero, then we return true else we return false semicolons build character anyway so now we're gonna pass this is even and let's pass it the value 10 we should also probably make this equal to and then let's run it and we have printed 0 2 4 6 8 and 10 so I hope you guys were able to understand how this worked this checker, because we're passing in a function as an argument, this print by now becomes a higher order function. 
So right now we're actually essentially mutating or we're doing different operations based on the checker, right? And the cool thing is this could be, we, we could do this again, but we could say var is odd. And then we could have the same anonymous function here that gets passed in. And then here we could say n mod three equals zero, same thing, return true or we could return false, right? And then down here, we could just pass this checker instead. And without changing anything else, this would now just print the um, um, values that are divisible by three, not odd, sorry. A little, it's misspoke there. This is wrong. This should be multiples of three. Is multiples of three the way we'd actually do the odd is just change this to a not essentially and then this will print out everything that's odd essentially so that's how you do the odd um yeah I, I digress a little bit but that's kind of higher orders in a nutshell uh, i showed you guys a few examples right there but basically higher order functions just the most simplest uh the most simplest for higher order functions, just simply think about every time you see a function that gets passed in as an argument or you have a function that gets returned, that overlapping function is now a higher order function. Now that's that. But before we end this topic, there's a few things that I want to talk about. So there's a thing called abstractions and we briefly mentioned it in our write-up. So let's take a look at that. So right here in this section, let me make it a little bit bigger for you guys. Um, I want you guys to go ahead and uh, read through this when you have time, but I'm gonna explain what abstractions is in a nutshell for you guys right here. In programming, we often have to think in terms of uh, abstractions in a way to make things a lot easier for us to reason about. For example, programming languages is actually an abstraction of sorts. As you all know, uh, the way computers work is just a collection of zeros and ones, but we're able to abstract away these instructions that we need to give to the computers by using a higher level language. So instead of using like assembly language, we could use C and then on top of C, we could use like C++ or C sharp. So all these things are just abstractions on top of each other. And the reason why we use abstractions is to make things more simple to discuss and to reason about and to talk about at a higher level. Because of course, yes, understanding the details is very important. But at the same time, imagine if you had to explain every single little detail of something before you could talk about an overarching picture of sorts. So there's a lot of places where we use abstraction and programming to talk about our architecture and to talk about other things. But I want to quickly talk about two very important topics that I have briefly covered a little bit in the past, which is imperative programming versus declarative programming. Now this kind of steps on the uh, toes of functional programming, but I'm gonna leave functional programming for its own video in the future, once I go towards the more advanced uh, bits of JavaScript. But I cannot mention functional programming without talking about declarative programming. So let me switch over to the code and then I'll explain to you what declarative programming and imperative programming style is. So what is imperative programming? Imperative programming is essentially when you list out all the steps for you to do a certain action. So let's create a, a function really quickly where we kind of just add, add three to each number in an array. Array equals one comma, comma two comma three comma four just for simplistic states. And then let's say that we wanna add this array to a value, a certain value. So we'll just say value equals two. Now, let's say we wanna create a new array uh, where each of the index item is um, added by two. So an imperative way of programming would be essentially showing the exact steps of doing this particular problem. So it would look something like this if we use the for loop. Um, var i equals zero, i is less than array dot length, and then i plus plus. And then here you would say r i, so we're accessing the first index or the i th index, and then we're going to add itself um, plus 
the value, right? Something like that. And then when we console log the value, we should, uh, not the value, sorry, array, then we should get, we should get a new array with uh, the value added to each index. And we do, right? Three, four, five, and six. So that was super simple, right? When you just look at this code, you can't inherently tell what this code is doing without you uh, reading through the code, right? And because it's just listing out each step by step. This is the imperative way of writing this code. Now, what is a declarative way? A declarative way is basically you creating a method that abstracts away this imperative function. So a lot of people uh, kind of confuse declarative function versus uh, declare writing code versus imperative writing code. But you, in fact, to have a declarative style of coding, you actually need to write an imperative code somewhere in the code base. You just happen to wrap that piece of code around in a way that is declarative. So that's a small tidbit that most people miss when we are talking about imperative versus declarative programming. But for example, if we were to refactor this code to essentially do the same thing, we would do something like this, array.map. And map, as you know, is a method in the array object. But array.map, and then we're going to just use an anonymous function here. And then we're going to pass in a value i and then we'll add this to the value and we'll return that so now when we print this this should give us the same value same result three four five and six so that's that's essentially how you would write this now notice the big difference this entire uh, instruction, this for loop, and the summation has been uh, essentially uh, been reduced down to this one liner. Now, the lines of code doesn't really make you, writing smaller bits of code doesn't really make you a better programmer. Just understand that, right? Uh, it has nothing to do with um, your skills as a programmer. What's really important is how clear are you uh, when you're writing code and how easy is it for other people when they're reading this code uh, to be able to understand what's going on because you know the one thing about programming that most people miss is that when you're writing code and you're formatting them in a certain way the care that you take in formatting is actually not uh, for the program itself it's not for the computer you're actually writing legible code so that other humans can read it clearly and understand what's going on. So what do I exactly mean by that? Okay, okay, take a look at this. So this for loop, right? If I did something like this, it would be a lot harder for you to understand what's going on, right? Because your eyes just doesn't see those breakpoints, right? But what if I did something like this? Now, do you think this is valid JavaScript? It actually is valid JavaScript. And I'll, I'll prove it to you right here. As you can see, it still prints three, four, five, and six. So this ugly piece of code right here, the computer doesn't give a crap about it. It's just the reason why we write it in this format like so is because it's a lot more legible for us to consume. And I always, I want you guys to always think about that. You know, adding semicolons, yeah, if we remove it, it doesn't really matter. And I probably missed a bunch in this video like series where I missed semicolons. I missed one right here. But the point is later down the line, you should install linters to get used to writing code in a certain way. You know, whatever your team decides, right? So all of this will still work because JavaScript has um, interesting behaviors about semicolons, right? How it will just inject semicolons for you where you missed it. So just think about these things as I'm kind of just talking about it. It was a little side detour about programming quality, but yeah, I digress. Looking at this code base right here, this map is a declared style of programming, and this is the imperative style of programming. Now, this is very important down the line when we start talking about functional programming, 
but just know this array that map is actually um, a higher order function. If you notice right here, I'm passing it a function. Sorry, this is an anonymous function. Um, this is uh, I'm using ES6 arrow syntax. I will cover that in another uh, lesson. Sorry about that. But yeah, th that's pretty much it uh, for this particular lesson on higher order functions. Um, just it's not that complicated of a, a topic. So that's pretty much that. I will add the challenges in. I haven't added it just quite yet, but it's basically going to be refactoring uh, imperative style programming into a declarative style. And then finally, I also want you guys to, uh, I'm going to create this chain of Rama kind of thing where you could add higher order function, functions to each other um, to get like this one final result. And that's, uh, and I might also create another like, add by kind of problem but yeah that's pretty much it for this particular lecture i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you guys in the next video